All right, everybody, today we're going to talk about force and weight. Swap display settings, there we go. And we'll pull up. There we go. Cool. So today we're going to talk about force and weight. We just finished acceleration, and now we're going to move on to a topic very much connected with gravity, as you'll see as we go throughout the day today. Remember that you can pause the video anytime because you should be following along with your note-taking worksheet. All right, so here we go. Let's get right into it. We're going to go over a couple of new uh, equations today. Um, we're going to bring in the letter F and the letter M. F being for force, capital F, very important, and M being for mass. We haven't talked about either of those yet. We'll get into it today, but you should know that weight, uh, to get into our fill in the blanks, weight is mass multiplied by the strength of gravity. And that at Earth's surface, the strength of gravity is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. That's a different unit. Uh, believe it or not, as we go into today, it actually means the same thing as meters per second squared. We're just writing it a little bit differently. Okay, and we can find out that that's true if we were to do our unit conversion process that we went through at the very beginning of the year. So, moving right along. Explaining motion. So Isaac Newton, he's the first person to explain why objects move the way they do. People had always wondered why things move the way they do, um, but they they really didn't know. And Isaac Newton figures this out. He, he writes these broad rules for how motion works. We call them the laws of motion. Uh, so we watched in that Newton's Dark Secrets video, uh, he wanted to create these broad rules. We'll get into Newton's Laws of Motion later in the week, okay? Um, you know, and understanding why things work the way they do has been an important concept forever. Um, I mean, if you think back to Greek mythology, even, uh, the Greeks and Romans really wanted to attribute why things happened to something. And that's where the pantheon of Greek and Roman gods come from, is because, well, if they couldn't figure out why hurricanes existed, ah, Poseidon or Neptune did it. It's that guy. Okay. Sun's real hot today. Must be Apollo. Uh, explaining why things happen, it just, it's just in human nature. Okay. Uh, and Isaac Newton says, oh, well, let's get away from that a little bit. Very religious guy still, though. Uh, but he wants to base... An explanation why things happen on some key concepts like mass and force. Okay, so his laws are based around those two concepts. And you always see Isaac Newton with those great locks of hair, and usually an apple. I'm working on hair like that. I'll get there. Moving on. What is mass? Let's talk about what mass is. All matter has mass and takes up space. Okay, if you take up space, you have mass. You're made up of matter. We are made up of matter. Okay, a solid rock has mass. So does do gases and liquids. Okay, um, air has mass and matter because, like you, it's saying, if you can feel the breeze hitting you, it's because matter is hitting you. Invisible gases in the air are hitting you. Okay, um, so what is mass? Simply put, mass is the amount of matter in an object. Okay? So that's what mass is. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. Okay? So the unit for mass is the kilogram. It's not grams. We're actually starting all the way at the, the, the top of the basic metric system. Remember King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk? We're starting all the way at the top in kilos. Okay, uh, the object you can see there is a two kilogram weight um, or mass, sorry, two kilogram mass. Now think about this. If mass is an amount, does mass have a direction? Hmm. It's just an amount. Mass does not have a direction. 
which therefore means that mass is a scalar quantity. Scalar quantity. It's not a vector. Mass is just an amount. Okay. That's kind of important thinking back to some of the, the older topics we've gone over not too long ago. Okay. Now, what is a force? A force, simply put, a push or a pull. A force is a push or a pull. If something pushes, if something pulls, it's a force. Forces can cause an object to change its motion. Now, you may have thought it should say like force can cause things to move, but think about this. If I'm sitting here in my chair, pretty still, I am in a state of motion. And so a force could cause me to spin in my chair. Requires a push or a pull. Okay. So think of some other examples of push or pull. Let's see. Weight is a force. We'll get into that in a bit. Friction. We haven't talked a lot about friction. Uh, things that resist motion. That would be friction. Tension from a rope. There was that picture of a man pulling uh, a, a piece of rope. Well, tension is that force. It's the force of the rope. Force from a spring. We'll talk about springs a little bit. You know, like the spring in your pin, things like that. An electric force. That's one at the bottom there. Electric force. Not the force, not like the emperor from Star Wars. Uh, electric force. A little different. Okay. So, units of force. Time to get into weird units. Physics is all about weird units. We got lots of weird units. Here's a weird unit. Force is measured in Newtons. Named not for Isaac Newton, but Fig Newtons, the delicious snack treat. No, it's it's Isaac Newton, very much so. If you laughed, I appreciate that. Anyways, uh, so a Newton, it's the unit of force. Anytime you see that capital F for force in an equation, it's measured in Newtons. Always measured in Newtons, okay? Uh, now, what a Newton is is actually rather complicated, believe it or not. A newton is the amount of force required to change the velocity of a one kilogram object by one meter per second in one second. I, you, I don't expect you to fully get that. So think about this. Force, think of it like effort, okay? In order to move something, you have to put in a certain amount of effort. Well, in order to take something that's not moving and get it moving, it requires an amount of force. Okay, uh, Take a look at what a Newton is made of, and that kind of helps actually helps you figure it out a little bit better. So look over there at that fraction, kilogram meter per second squared. We'll break it up. Break it up for a second. Okay, um, If we were to look at... two parts. You got this kilogram, all right? Let me turn my pin here. So, oh, I didn't want to work. That's kind of ugly. We've got kilograms here. That's mass. And look what's right here, this other part. Meters per second squared. What's that the unit of? Think back. So we have mass this is me writing with the mouse. It's not good. Mass, we have acceleration. Okay. I'm actually pretty proud of that A drawing with the mouse. But mass and acceleration, they are being multiplied by each other. Okay. So really a Newton is the multiplication of the mass and the force. Or mass and acceleration, I should say. Sorry. Um, to get Newtons. Think back to middle school. Mass and acceleration together. That should remind you of something related to Isaac Newton. Okay, moving on now. Weight, believe it or not, is a type of force. It's a type of force. It's not a force most people are happy about, but it's a type of force nonetheless. So, weight 
is the force of gravity acting on objects with mass. Okay? So think about this. Difference between weight and mass. Okay? Difference between weight and mass. Weight needs gravity. Think about this. Are you heavier or lighter on the moon? If you've seen any sci-fi or watched the moon landing or whatever, people bounce. They float almost on the moon. They seem to take big leaps like Superman or something. That's because you weigh less on the moon because gravity is less. But also think about this. Do you have less mass? Are you made up of less matter? Do you go to the moon and somehow this hand doesn't exist anymore? Oh, I got less mass, right? I got less mass. I only got one hand now. No, you have the same amount of mass. The mass stays the same. Weight changes because of gravity, okay? And weight has a direction, right? Weight has a direction. Think about you stand on a scale. The way a scale works is you press down on it. So in this example scale, you press down on it with the force of your weight. So your weight goes down. It's the same direction as gravity. And as you press down, the scale moves sideways. So this is an old-fashioned mechanical scale. Even the electric ones work on a very similar principle. Okay? So weight is a force, and it has a direction. So it's got an amount and a direction, bringing back old concepts, amount and direction is a vector, force, weight, they're vectors, okay, they're vectors. Now, mass versus weight. Mass is what's known as an intrinsic property, okay, it's a measure of the quantity of matter. So here's an important way I remember intrinsic. Think independent. Intrinsic, don't care about nobody. It's independent. Mass is mass is mass is mass. It doesn't rely on anything except maybe how many times you've been to McDonald's in the last week. That can change your mass, as I learned over the quarantine. So your weight, however, is what's known as extrinsic. It needs external influence. So think about this. Weight depends on gravity. Weight needs the extrinsic influence of gravity. Intrinsic, independent. Extrinsic, external influences. Okay, you with me? You following me? Weight changes if you go into space. Weight depends on your location. Where you are, believe it or not, the rate of gravity changes depending on how close you are to the Earth's core. So think about this. If you live in the bayou, Louisiana, below sea level is New Orleans, you're closer to the core of the Earth than you are in San Antonio. So not by much, but in New Orleans, you weigh more. And it's not just because of the Cajun food, okay? You weigh a little more, itty bitty bitty bit more. Whereas you go to Denver, Mile High City, way up there, you're further away, you actually weigh itty bitty bit less, just a little bit, just a little bit, okay? Weight depends on where you are. All right, next thing. Weight versus mass. Oh, it's something I already said. Here we go. Things I already said. Mass is a scalar quantity. It's just an amount. How much matter do you have? Weight and forces are vectors. It has magnitude and direction. So see that FW right there? Ding, ding. Capital F always means force. So what do you think the little W means? Hopefully you figured out by the topic we're going over. It's weight. So FW means the force of weight. That's how you can remember it. Force of weight. FW. Next. 
Weight is the force of gravity acting on objects with mass. Okay? So going back to some of those older equations, equations that we have been going over. Force of weight is mass times gravity. So here's an equation for you guys. Mass times gravity. Mass in kilograms. Gravity in technically, technically, in newtons per kilogram. Okay, technically in newtons per kilogram. Uh, because if mass is in kilograms, then the kilograms on the bottom of the equation, right here, gets canceled out. When you multiply mass times gravity, that little kilograms at the bottom gets canceled out. Okay, um, but force of weight, mass times gravity. Gravity being 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Now, common question is, do we make it negative? Okay. I, I like to tell all my students to always make gravity negative. Um, but think about it this way a little bit. So if we're talking about the force of weight, you would probably make it negative because weight is going downward. So gravity is negative, downwards force. If you're just asking how much does someone weigh, they're probably wanting a positive number, right? So it's really just situational. Um, I personally don't care if you put negative, uh, if you say a negative weight, someone weighs negative 600 newtons. I feel really happy about that. That tells me I've lost weight. Um, so if you tell me I have a negative weight, I'd be like, well, thank you. Uh, but it's not true at all. Um, so mass times gravity. If you're asking what is the weight, probably leave it positive. If we're talking about the force, we're talking about the direction of the force and all that, you should probably make it negative. Okay, moving on. One kilogram weighs 9.8 newtons. Okay, this is roughly the mass and weight of one liter bottle of water. So, sorry, if a one liter bottle of water has mass of one kilogram, times 9.8 newtons per kilogram, you get 9.8 newtons is the force of weight. Okay? Exciting, I know. It's riveting. Okay. Now, force is a vector, so it has a direction. The force of weight always points straight down. What changes if you take the bottle to the moon? Okay. Does the moon have more or less gravity? It's less. So what happens to the weight? Does it get heavier? Does it get lighter? Mass stays the same, but the weight changes. The weight goes down. Uh, the weight on the moon, believe it or not, is roughly one-sixth, I believe, uh, of the gravity. Whew. It's the afternoon. I'm tired. So gravity is about one-sixth on the moon. That's uh, so 9.8 divided by 6 uh, gets you that value. Um, and so you take the mass, one kilogram, multiply it by 1.62, and that gets you your force of weight on the moon. Okay. And we're going to actually practice this with our weight here in just a second. We'll do it. What is a pound? We always weigh things in pounds, right? Like we'd say this person has a weight of 124.5 pounds. Can't remember when I weighed that much, but 124.5 pounds. Well, a pound is an English unit of force. Okay, so just like Newton's, it's the American version. Okay, just like uh, feet, think of feet and inches instead of meters and centimeters. It's just another version of the same concept. And believe it or not, one pound is 4.448 Newtons. Okay, so a Newton is a small unit of force, meaning that a Newton is a very small amount. A single Newton is a small amount. A pound isn't a lot either. It's very little. 
Um, but we're going to do a example problem here in a moment with uh, the mass and weight on the moon. We're going to give it a shot. So if a person weighs 125 pounds, what's her mass in kilograms? Well, you would take your weight, multiply it by 4.448 newtons per pound, a little unit conversion here, and you get your uh, weight in newtons, okay? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a minute. This is not in the notes worksheet, but we're going to do it anyways. I like doing this. It's fun, okay? Take your weight, write it down. Write it somewhere in your notes. Write down your weight in pounds. Okay? Now, pull out a calculator, or actually do math, heaven forbid, and you're going to take your weight and multiply it by 4.448. Now you got your weight in newtons. I bet you feel bad a little bit, because that's a big number. <laughs> uh, when you multiply by that much. Now, that's your weight in newtons. Okay, now I'm gonna make you feel good though. I'm gonna make you feel good. I'm gonna tell you what your weight is on the moon. The moon. Let's take a second. So we have our mass, or sorry, our weight. We have our force of weight in newtons. I want you to find your mass. Not everybody knows what their mass is, okay? Um and I want you to take your force of weight in newtons and divide by the value of gravity. So whatever your weight was that you just found, divide it by 9.8. And that's going to get you your actual mass. Uh, so if you decide to be a European uh, boxing star or UFC star in Europe, you're going to need your mass in kilograms. You'll thank me later. Okay. So take your weight in newtons, divide it by 9.8. That's how you'll get your mass. Okay. Now, let's find your weight on the moon. Take your mass. Take your mass and multiply it by 1.62 newtons per kilogram. Okay. So you multiply by that um, and you'll get your weight on the moon. In newtons. In newtons. That'll get you newtons. Okay? If you really want to know what your weight is in pounds on the moon, you would have to divide by our amount of newtons per pound. Okay? But that gets you your weight on the moon. Okay? So it's kind of cool. A little process. You can rewind this video if you want to watch that again. But fun little example problem. So whenever you know the mass of an object, you can calculate its weight. Force of weight equals mass times gravity. Okay. Um, whenever you know the weight of an object, you can calculate its mass. So really, we're just showing you another way to flip around uh, the equations, and you can uh, solve for different things. Okay. So we're just moving things around the equation. You can find mass based on weight and gravity. You can find uh, force of weight based on uh, mass and gravity there, two different versions of the same equation. That's all it is. Really, as long as you have the first one, this equation, you're pretty good. Okay? So assessment, some, some assessment type questions. Um, it says, if you take a trip from the Earth to the Moon, which statement below is correct? Your mass and weight both decrease. Your mass stays the same and your weight decreases. Your mass decreases and your weight stays the same. Or your mass increases and your weight decreases. So I'll give you a minute. Think about that. Solve it. Okay. You should have gotten that your mass stays the same and your weight decreases. Mass is constant. Mass is constant, but weight, because you go to the moon, it goes down. Your weight goes down because it's uh, weight is extrinsic. It needs gravity. And I need coffee. So, all right, 
Second question. What is the weight of the dumbbell in newtons? The weight of the dumbbell in newtons. So it says that you've got a um, 10 kilogram dumbbell resting on a table, partly supported by a spring that pulls upward with a force of 50 newtons. What is the weight of the dumbbell in newtons? Okay. It just wants the weight of the dumbbell, which means what is the force of gravity? 9.8. Multiply by the mass. 10. So we end up with... Where my mouse go? So our F, W equals M, G. Our mass is 10 kilograms times 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Okay? And it is a downward force, so I mean, I, I personally would probably make it negative, but 10 times 9.8, you should be getting uh, 98. Okay? Force, weight, mass times gravity, right there. Bada bing, bada boom. All right. A person weighs 150 pounds. What is the weight in newtons? Was this person's mass in kilograms? All right. Weight in newtons. Uh, we talked about this a little bit, right? Um, if you recall, I'm going to go back a couple of slides so I can show you what I'm talking about. We found out that there's 4.448 newtons per pound, so we need to multiply. Okay, so you need to multiply the weight in pounds by the number of newtons per pound. So just like it's a unit conversion, it's 150 LBS over 1 times our 4.448 newtons per 1 pound. Okay? And that's it for that one. I mean, we do 667 newtons. Boom. Done with that. What's the person mass in kilograms? Okay. This I want you to think about for a minute. So we have weight. We have FW, right? We have that. We are looking... For mass, mass already comes in kilograms. Remember, we did that. I like to plug things into just the normal FW equation. So we know person's mass, or the weight, is 667 newtons equals mass times gravity. We need to get mass by itself. So we would divide by 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Right there. Divide. Believe it or not, our newtons here would cancel out when we do our division. We end up with 68.1 kilograms. All right. Uh, so that's been basically it for an introduction on force and weight. Tomorrow we will get into a concept called free body diagrams. Okay, so I've been Mr. Peritano. Hopefully you enjoyed just just a taste. This is the, just a tasty taste of forces. We're going to get into a whole lot more stuff. We're going to get into Newton's laws of motion as we get into later in the week. But definitely pay attention to tomorrow when we talk about 
free body diagrams. Uh, so we get to be artists. Uh, if you're watching me on the video, you will get to see me do some more bad drawings uh, with a mouse. Maybe I'll switch computers and actually use a stylus. Maybe. We'll see. Um, but for now, I've been Mr. Peritano. This has been Force and Wait.